we get to the negative 2.25 and then I take the 5 minus the 5.25 and I get to the 0.25 I take the 6 minus the 5.25 and I get to the 0.75 and I take the 7 minus the 5.25 and I get to the 1.75 so that's what we have here there's those three numbers and then to get to the z-score we take those numbers and divide them by the standard deviation so all we're doing now is the next step we would say okay what did we do again we took the 3 minus the 5.25 divided by the standard d divided by 1.71 and then the next one would be 5 minus the 5.25 divided by the standard d 1.71 and so on and so forth so we we have those here's the second one approximately 1. Uh, 0.15 and then we do the same with the y's here's all the y's minus the mean of the y so so we'd say okay the y's over here would be for example 105 minus the 209 boom and then we would take the next one 185 minus the 209 and so on and so forth so if I go over here we're going to say there we have it negative 24 negative 8 and then we take each of those and divide it by the standard d so we just would do then same thing if i took this first one 105 minus the 209 divided by the standard d 99.92 about 1.04 on the negative so there we have that and then we just multiply the z's together so these two together and that will give us then if i take this first one 1 1.32 times the 1.04 we get the 1.37 and so on so if i sum up this last column i get the numerator so i can then use my little table here and sum that up i'm going to put it in a table format here's the sum of this column i can actually do it in a calculator why not because there's only four numbers 1.34 plus 0.04 minus 0.04 plus 1.39 gives us about 2.77 rounding is involved then the denominator is just n minus one n is the number of items there's rows one row two row three row four row n minus one is going to give us three and then we have the numerator and denominator in the outer columns 2.77 divided by three is going to give us the uh, 0.92 Notice again the format that I have here of this formula, kind of useful to put it in a table uh, when you're working like in Excel spreadsheets or something like that. It's useful to see it this way. You can build your worksheets this way and say this is the numerator, uh, which is this bit, and then the denominator. I'm going to do a subcalculation and I'm going to break that out as many subcalculations as I need and pull them into the inner column, indicating it's a subcalculation with the colon, with the indentation, n minus 1. The result then bouncing back out into the outer column, which I can call n minus 1, or simply in this case the denominator. And then I'm dividing out just the outer columns 2.77 divided by 3, 0.92. Uh, now I can see this in Excel and use Excel to do this. With the analysis tool, which isn't in Excel by it's in Excel, but it's not turned on by default. You can find that in the options. We do that in the Excel problem if you want to look at that in more detail. But then in there, I can do the correlation and just pick up this data set. You have to have the data set next to each other. So I just highlight that data set in Excel, and Excel will then give me this prompt. And I'll have to populate. Here's where the data set goes. I'd have to check off the range or that I had the labels involved if I clicked on the labels and then tell me where I want to put it if I was to put it in Excel. And it'll give me something like this. And I'm focused in on the X and the Y, which are intersecting here. There's the 0.9219 and so on that we got to here, although we rounded it. So this isn't dynamic however so if i change the data set this isn't going to change with it so it's not a great tool for your worksheet if you're making a dynamic worksheet but it's a great tool to analyze the data up front or to check your data kind of as we are uh, doing here you can also use the this same data analysis tool and look at this descriptive data 
And I just want to point that out, even though it's not our main point of focus here, to give you this kind of descriptive information for the X and the Y. This is our general kind of statistics info. You've got the mean, you got the standard error, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, the sample variance, uh, the minimum, the maximum, the sum, the count, and so on. I, and this, uh, again, is not dynamic. It doesn't change uh, as your data changes. So I, it's a good tool to use as a preliminary analysis. It might be the first thing you do before you build something out of your data set to get a feeling or an idea of what's going on with them. And you can highlight multiple data sets and have it spit out, or you can use it as a check figure for your data sets. So just a quick recap here. We're now looked at a, at a perfect positive correlation, a perfect negative correlation. Now we're looking at more of a realistic example where it's not perfectly correlated, but you have a general trend. This one being one where in advance you would expect to see some kind of general trend. And by plotting out that trend, you can get more understanding about the data sets and possibly giving you predictive power into the future, such as how many hens would I would I need to buy by you know using the mathematical formula? Obviously, that you know these hens were doing were doing great, and then these purchases of hens were kind of slacker hens, and they weren't up to you know the production line that that we were expecting from them. Uh, but again, laying eggs is I'm not laying eggs is difficult. I would I would assume, so I'm not complaining. I'm not like you know it's tough work. But you would think like the other hens were doing you know, did a little bit better some, you know, than these hints. But then this one is outside, but then you have the trend line and the trend line can help you to predict, uh, to predict, of course. And, and then of course we can see what the exact correlation is uh, with our calculation here mathematically, which will give you an understanding of, of how good that relationship is, how reliable you can kind of be on using that, you know, basically the trend line possibly to make Predictions, you can do that with a formula calculation, which is useful sometimes because as we'll see in future examples, breaking this information out like this, looking at the Z-scores will often give you uh, more information or could quite likely give you more information than simply using Excel to spit out uh, the, uh, Z, the uh, correlation. So, but either method would be good. And then of course, graphing it, when you graph it out, you get that pictorial representation. So we can look at the correlation conceptually. We can might have an idea about what the correlation might be. And then of course, we can plot out it on a graph and see it pictorially and pick up the formula of the trend line, which could be useful. And then we can do a mathematical calculation of the correlation. In this case, having of course a uh, positive correlation, but not perfectly positive.